Yo, what is going on everyone? Happy Sunday. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Hart for those of you that are new and today I'll be breaking down this six game NBA slate here for Sunday night on DraftKings. Kind of talking through my favorite plays, who I like, who I don't like. Early look core plays, like an early look player pool of guys I really have interest in building around. All the good stuff in this video, so make sure to hit that like button and subscribe. Um, more housekeeping uh, for the rest of the NBA season. I'll be doing daily videos as well as my updated core plays on my Patreon, as well as my NBA slate cheat sheets on my Patreon as well. So those will officially be back on my Patreon link down below for every NBA main slate for the rest of the season, as well as the NFL playoffs. So I'll include that as well. So make sure to stay tuned. Check that out. Link down below. Um, and yeah, I will have price picks that will be coming back as well for the NBA. But jumping into tonight's slate, six game slate here. Just want to do a quick recap of my lineup from yesterday. Um, you know, went with Maxi, he, he dropped 46, Heel 23, Ubre 37, Hart 15, Hartenstein 44, Lillard 36, Morris 33, and then Markin 56 there. So I was able to cash another one of those days where is, you know, of course, I never get rewarded with Dame. Uh, good spot here, four percent owned, eight point eight k, lowest price of the season. Of course, once again, I get a snowflake. I, I can never get him right. Frustrating stuff. If he would have had a solid game there, uh, I mean, the winner was at three seventeen. So, a solid game out of him. Something from Buddy Heald could have been, you know, going for a takedown. But you know, doubling up my money, can't complain too much there. And then for the Saturday uh, main slates here, um, had a solid lineup. You know, Stroud, Taylor, Singletary, Collins. Deontay uh, got screwed there with Bateman. Very annoying. Um, Schultz, Warren, and the Texans was able to, uh, you know, win a little bit of money there. So it's all day overall yesterday. But, yeah, let's get into the six-game slate here. Uh, for the NBA side, let's take a look at the game totals. Blazers, Nets, ball at risk there. Nine-point spread, 225-and-a-half game total. Hawks, Magics, two-point spread, 238. Pelicans, Kings, three-and-a-half-point spread, 235-and-a-half. Timberwolves, Mavs, three-point spread, 232. Grizzly Suns, four and a half, 228. Uh, Pistons, Nuggets, 16 and a half, 235. Raptors, Warriors, two point spread, 237. And then Clippers, Lakers, five and a half point spread, 232 and a half. Which is not on, maybe that's later tonight. Um, I didn't see that. But yeah, that's not on the uh, list here for these games tonight. So jumping into this first game here, Pelicans versus the Kings. Good game environment to target here. Uh, so, for the Pelicans, we know the offense is going to be coming from these three main guys. Ingram, Zion, CJ. Now, Zion is questionable. If he is out, which it looks like he should be good to go, he went through the Pelicans walkthrough Saturday. Um, so, I would assume he should be good to go here for this game uh, tonight. If that's the case, I, I think CJ would probably be your best bet if you want to take a shot on the guy. Um, you know, been in a few blowouts recently in the past three games, but... You know, he should see around mid-30s minutes, should shoot anywhere from like 10 to 15 times, has decent upside, but with all three of them in, I think they're all more just secondary options to get a little bit different on the slate. Obviously, it's a good matchup against the Kings, but they're coming at, you know, normal price tags, um, and they're all three, the usage, they're just the main guys on this team in terms of usage, so not, you know, one of them's not really sticking out in terms of the other, so they're all kind of just there. With all three of them, you know, should be good to go. J Val, as you can see, his minutes are just dropping. Obviously, there's some blowout risk uh, or blowout opportunities that kind of limited his minutes. But overall, he's kind of on that path once again, like he did at the beginning of the season, where his minutes are just very, very insecure. So I don't, I don't like him at all right now. Herb Jones, you know, he should play the minutes, but with those three main guys there at the top, he's not going to see a lot of offensive opportunities. I don't mind taking a shot in Trey Murphy, one of those GPP plays that does have some good upside. And if the game blows out, he should see a little bit more minutes. But yeah, 5400 is a fine price tag to take a shot on him at. And then Larry Nance, if you need a cheap center, 4,500. I think it's a fine play. Uh, you know, Daniels will see a little bit of run. Same thing with Marshall. Same thing with, uh, yeah, Jose Alvarado's out. So, you know, Daniels will see some run. I'd say around 15 to 20 minutes. Nothing too crazy there. So there's a little bit of value, but not a ton to like there on the Pelican side. Just more so just ways to get different contrarian options. On the King side here, I, I think Sabonis is still way too cheap here. As you can see, Van Epps are going off two triple doubles in a row there the past two games. But we know the upside with him is massive, right? Like, it, it just feels too cheap. I mean, he's playing a ton of minutes, only 10K still. Uh, solid matchup here. So really like him, really like Fox. I mean, they're both leading this team in terms of usage. They both have massive, massive ceilings that are always very, very solid and safe plays. Monk, 
I do think is a little bit too pricey here. Now the minutes were you know skyrocketing the past two games, but before that, as you can see, minutes are all over the board. So he makes for a fine GPP play, but I still don't love the price tag on him with those questionable minutes. Murray, kind of the same thing. You know, he should see the minutes, he should see the shot attempts, but obviously he has a little bit of limited upside. You know, played alongside Fox and Sabonis. But as you can see, he does have that double double upside if he can hit a shot. So 6400, I think you're getting him at a decent price tag. Nothing too crazy there. And in terms of the, the other guys, I mean, Harrison Barnes, fine value. Um, Herter, you know, more so a GPP value play. He's been terrible. Lyles is questionable, which could lead to more minutes for a guy like, you know, possibly going to the wings like a Herter Barnes, or they can even dip down to maybe a guy like Alex Lynn, getting a little bit more run off the bench. If you're really looking for some value, you can look to him. But that's really it. So, you know, if Lyles is in, I always think he's a fine value at 4,100. Moving on to Atlanta here for the Atlanta side. Uh, Trey Young, I mean, always a very, very safe and solid option. Uh, you know, very disappointing game there against Indiana. Obviously, they got blown out by like 40. But before that, I mean, he's averaging like 30 and 10 the past like month. So he's a really, really strong play. I think DeJounte is getting into that territory of I want to take a shot on him at 7,600. Minutes are great. He's been very, very aggressive the past you know, five, six games. You can see 15 or more shots in all of them. And he does have, you know, rebounding ability, assist ability, steal ability. So I actually really have, you know, a good amount of interest in DeJounte uh, in this matchup against Orlando. I know Orlando's a really good defensive team, so they might try to limit Trey, which means, you know, DeJounte could have a big opportunity here. So I like him. I mean, Jalen Johnson has been unreal. So I think he's a fine play. Price has really come up. So 7,200, not getting them at a discount anymore. Uh, should be a slower paced game, even though the, the game total still pretty up there. So I think it's fine if you land on him. Same thing with Capella. They're, they're there. I don't mind them. Bogdan's price has come down. So have the minutes. Uh, but obviously, that last game is a huge blowout. Should see around 30-ish minutes. Opportunities have come down a little bit but in terms of the minutes. But as you can see, these shot attempts are still there. 14, 19, 16, 14. So he's super aggressive. Kind of more a scoring dependent recently. But I do like the minutes on him. Uh, Bay, he's just been god-awful. Minutes have been solid. But as you can see, upside a little bit limited there. Hunter is still out, so that should just be more, you know, safe and secure minutes for Bay and Bogdan. Uh, Okungwu, 5,000. Price is finally coming down a little bit. He's there. Uh, that's really it. They're really just running kind of like a seven-man rotation. You know, Trey Young, DeJounte, Johnson, Capella, Bogdan, Bay, and then a little bit of Okungwu. That's really it. So it's like there's a not much, you know, in terms of value. And there's, you know, good amount of interest in these, you know, guys. But they're all priced about right. So it's like nothing too crazy in terms of, like, who really sticks out. But I think it's, you know, I think my number one would be DeJounte, then Trey, uh, then, you know, Johnson and Bogdan for me. Moving on to Orlando here. I mean, Paolo has been absolutely unreal. So it's like, you know, 9K for him, which really feels too pricey. But when you look at his box score and what he's been doing this season so far, I mean, he's been unreal, especially since, you know, a little bit before Christmas, the past two weeks, averaging 40 or more fancy points per game, coming off probably his, you know, two best games of his career. 43 career high there against the Kings. And then against Denver, they won almost a 70 bomb. Uh, went for a triple double. So Paulo has been unreal and Franz is out. So it's going to be more, uh, you know, falling upon you know, Paulo's shoulder. So I really like him. It's a fantastic matchup here. Paulo looks like a very, very solid play tonight. So I was just priced all the way up to 6,700, which feels crazy. But I mean, with no Franz, if you guys haven't been watching, he is a huge, huge part of that offense. It's pretty much, you know, the offense goes through Paolo and Franz. And with Franz out, you know, that's a lot, a lot of usage to go around. So guys like Suggs, Anthony uh, are going to need to step up. As you can see, there's a lot of guys out. Goga's questionable. Wendell is questionable uh, for this game here. I think Goga should be good to go, but he's, you know, questionable as well. Holt's questionable. So there's a lot to like here for Orlando. Um, ton of different scenarios. So it's more so wait and see approach here for Orlando. I'll have updates on my Twitter of who I want to go to. But yeah, there's a lot, a lot of guys listed out. So we're going to get some value, but yeah, Paolo, Suggs, and Anthony all look like very, very good plays. Mo Wagner could be a you know core play as well. He has huge upside if the minutes are there. So a lot to like here for Orlando. I'm just going to throw a bunch of them in here as just like early suggestion. Guys, you want to you know, kind of take a look to build around. I don't love the price tag on Suggs, but even so, he should see the minutes. He should see the usage opportunity. So I'm just going to throw all these guys in here. So just so you guys know that we should be, you know, really waiting on that news there for the Orlando side to see if we're going to get, you know, multiple Orlando guys into our lineup there against Atlanta. So could be a whole game stack for that Atlanta Orlando game. Moving on to Minnesota here versus Dallas. Great, great price tag for Anthony Edwards, 8.8 K. He's really been stepping up recently as well. As you can see, 
the past six, seven games, 44 points, 31, 35, 35, 24. So he's been on a hot streak there. Carl Towns is all the way down to 7,400, which is just way, way, way too cheap here. Hasn't been the best since, you know, injuring that, you know, I think it was his knee or ankle. I think it was a knee. But, I mean, we know the upside is there with him. And 7,400 is a great price tag for him. So we'll throw him in there as well. The rest of the team, just kind of there. Nothing really stands out, you know, value-wise. I mean, McDaniels does play a good amount of minutes now. So it's like he's a fine value, 4,500. Don't mind him. In terms of that, no one else really stands out to me. Moving on to Dallas here. The big news is obviously Luka. If he's good to go, I always think he's a great spend-up. Kyrie would be more so a secondary option to get different. Luka's obviously out. Kyrie becomes, you know, a great, fantastic spend-up. We saw that last game uh, with no Luka. He went for 51 in 29 minutes. They blew out the other team. Uh, Hardaway would have to step up more offensively. He should play about 30-ish minutes, maybe a little bit more. He should shoot the ball a ton. And then, you know, they, they could have some value here, but I don't love a lot here. You know, Derek Jones Jr. would probably be the third-best option if that's the case. Otherwise, you know, if it's Luka and Kyrie, they're both in. It's really just those two at the top. Don't think there's a real, you know, need to get different on this team. Maybe taking a shot on Lively if he's good to go. No minutes limit. Moving on to Detroit here. Detroit side versus Denver. Obviously, massive low at risk here. Uh, so these guys are just more so, you know, contrarian options. If you want to get to Cade, he should lead the team. If it stays close, if they have a chance, it's probably going to be because of Cade having a really good game. You know, Dern, I think he's a solid play. But once again, having to guard Jokic, huge pull out risk. So it's tough to really get to any of these guys. Um, but if you think this game's going to stay close, it's going to be because of Cade. Uh, Bogdan and probably Duran. Ivy could step up. I don't mind taking a shot on him, but he's been bad recently. And, and that's really it. Livers did start that last game. He was very disappointing there. So uh, it's just, you know, very risky, very risky team to get to for De- Detroit. So I don't think there's a need to get to them. On the Denver side here, fantastic price for Jokic. I mean, he was a lot more aggressive recently, uh, the past two games there. Uh, after that game of, you know, shooting six, only seven times against Charlotte, which is wild. Of course, I played him then. Uh, but yeah, we know the upside there with Jokic. Has been really hammering the triple doubles l- lately, like he usually does. So maybe he gets super aggressive here against Detroit. We'll have to see. He can definitely get there, even if they do blow him out in like two quarters. So you could always take a shot on him. But I do think it's risky. But if you were going to go that route, Murray and Jokic, I think they're fine plays. Uh, moving on to Memphis here versus Phoenix. Ja is questionable. Uh, so that's big news there because if he misses, you know, we're going to want to load up on probably, you know, Bain and Jackson Jr. They become two of the better plays on the slate just because they're going to take over a lot of that offensive role. You know, a guy like Marcus Smart should step up. He'd probably be a solid option. Kind of his best game of the season there against the Lakers. But we know he's very up and down. Even if Rant misses, you know, you'd expect him to you know step up, be more aggressive offensively. But at times, he's not. So, He's just definitely a risky play. I'd really just prefer getting to Bain and Jackson Jr. if there's no Ja. Now, if there's Ja, uh, I think Bain's a fine GPP play, more so a secondary option for me. Morant would probably be the core play uh, if you're going to go to like a Memphis player. Jackson Jr., we know the upside is there, but eh, he'd be like a shoulder shrug play. And then um, Luke Kennard, I think, is always still a very solid value. You should see anywhere from 15 to 20 minutes. Obviously, if there's no Ja, I'd like him a lot more as a value play. Moving on to Phoenix here. Big news is Durant. If he's good to go, uh, I think you know Booker and Durant and Beal all fine secondary options. No real standouts to me there. Nurkic is there. Allen's there. It's just like they're all shoulder shrugs. But if you know Durant is out, once again, Booker and Beal look fantastic. And then Allen would be a fine secondary option. I mean, he had a huge game last game. But one of those things, he's just going to be a three-point merchant. So if he hits a shot, he can definitely get there. If not, not the best price tag for him. So, yeah, that's big news there for you know the, the Suns is Durant. If he's in... All three of these guys are fine plays. If he's out, Booker and Beal, like two of the best plays on the slate, kind of like uh, a Bain and Jackson Jr. If there's no jaw. Then moving on to the last game here, Toronto versus Golden State. Uh, we're getting great price tags on Barnes and Siakam and quickly. I think they all look very, very strong. Uh, in terms of the rest of the team here, Barrett, 6,200. I just think the upside's limited. I mean, minutes have been solid. Attempts have been solid, but still, I- I'd rather get to the three main guys here offensively, Barnes, Siakam, and quickly. Don't think there's a need to get to Barrett there at that price tag. I think Schroeder's fine off the bench. You should see anywhere around 30 minutes. And that's really it. Then moving on to Golden State here. I still think it's a great price tag and staff. He'll be super contrarian at the top. Clay's there. Pods is there. He should see more minutes. I think Pods would probably be my favorite play alongside Steph. Just because Chris Paul had been starting. He's hurt now. So Pods should probably take that role over. Uh, but yeah, the Draymond's out. You know, Paul's out. Uh, Gary Payton's out. So 
we should see some uh, value here for Golden State. I, I do like Trace Jackson Davis if he does start. You know, Sarge has been a little bit rather recently as well. Uh, so I do have some interest in the Warriors here. I think the best play would probably be Steph or Pods. And then, you know, Clay's always a GPP play, but uh, then I would look to a guy like Trace Jackson Davis and maybe Sarge. So that is the breakdown for today. Do have a good amount of injury news, as I said. Luca, Durant, Morant all kind of change the slates as well as Zion. So, uh, and uh, the obviously the big one, Orlando Magic news. So, going to want to wait for that Orlando, Orlando Magic news because we're going to probably want to load up on at least two, maybe even three uh, Orlando Magic and then kind of build your lineup around that. So, hope you guys liked the video. Hit that like button. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.